Hello guys and girls, if there are any out there watching, um, just finished the latest elf, you might have already seen pictures on this because I'm a bit behind uh, with the, the video today, I didn't have time or energy to do it yesterday, I'm going to do my best to hold this as steady as I can, and I've, um, I've just found out something new with the camera, which should hopefully allow me to zoom in a little bit more. Uh, hopefully that'll go well. Now, this model um, is an interesting one. Uh, I hadn't really thought about the colour scheme I was going to do before painting it and it just, just went with it. I don't do that very often and in fact I never do that and I think it's turned out pretty well. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Uh, but ended up being quite a um, a monochrome looking scene because of it and that was totally unintentional in fact the only real color in it is um, in her skin or the metal the hair I mean they're all got colors but it, it is quite like you know could say it's black and white almost uh, the, the the color the, the main color is just in the the hilt of the blade which is purple I'm going to try and switch this camera so see what happens. Sorry about the camera shake. I can bring it in closer. Uh, and then there's the red in the eyes. So the, the whole scene was um, meant to be a bit of a, a, a blue-green atmosphere uh, because I wanted to be sort of like reflecting off these green tiles. For some reason, I always think of um, the dark elves having like green, dark marble, dark black, blue marble. You know they're black. They're black. Um, they're black ships and those black stone ships and whatever they. Um, I feel like they have a, a a green tone to them, which is which is why I made that the decision to go that way. Uh, and then I, I seem to make this ridiculously silly decision to paint full eyes on this model which are really quite tiny eyes. They look fairly big in comparison to the size of the model but uh, I've got a photo which I'll put up of the way the model looks next to a, a ruler and she's like one and a half inches tall and the size of her eyes are probably less than one millimeter or one millimeter if you include the eyelid part which I had to freehand on because they just they're just orbs uh, and that that was that was really difficult another thing that's interesting about this monochrome look is that um, the different tones of things like I, I hadn't intended to um, to go for like a monochrome effect and it, it turned out pretty well considering I hadn't planned but I did the hair first and I used a sort of a green grey colour uh, to paint the to paint the base coat on the hair it was it was scale 75 um, field grey I think it might be might be some it might not be that but something like field grey let me just check <clears throat> yep I was right it's field grey um, and then I built on top of that with uh, various blues and greys and whites, and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of um, scale artist buff built in as well. And I, I painted that first because I, obviously you can see it's got lots of hard to reach places in here would have been impossible to reach without getting paint on the face and the hand and same within here and down there and even just like the inside of the hair. So that was a different thing for me. I don't usually do hair first. Uh, then I went on to the skin next and I used um, multiple colors as usual, which is, you know, my way of doing things. But it's actually made up of um, Games Workshop's Demonet skin color mostly. Like it's Demonet hide base coat and... Um, and then slanish grey as a as a part of the mid tone, and then it goes up to like um, pearl grey from scale art scale seventy five um, artist tubes, 
And there's other colours in there as well. There's some like light blues and lots of different light blue tones which I have on, on my palette. Um, I feel like the skin tone came out pretty well. I had to really focus on trying to keep it smooth because even though it, it is smooth, you can still really see... Let's see how far I can bring this in. See, still really see the texture that the paint builds up on her, on her stomach when you get close in like that. But I like that texture. That's part of, part of what I love about the skin tones. But I mean, look at that craziness. You can't see a lot of that with the naked eye. Um, and yeah, this was the next one in my non-metallic metal learning journey. And I mean, thinking back on it now, um, this probably wasn't the best model to choose for um, this early stage of the non-metallic metals. There's a lot of complex shapes. Uh, there's not a lot of room to work, especially like in the crown and in her her bracelet, uh, in the, the belt buckle, the Batman looking belt buckle, buckle thing. I don't know what that is. And in her chest armor, I mean, Really, the only big areas to work with were the, uh, the spheres of the chest and the tines of the fork. And even then, they're, they're really quite small, so kind of difficult to work with. And one of the things that I'm seeing that I'm struggling to understand the most is how to get these... Um, secondary reflections like the, the bounce lights that are in the highlight so you've got your main highlight you've got a bounce there and a different bounce here um, getting those to appear in complex shapes it's still something that I can't quite wrap my head around like the crown is um, more or less painted in my normal style of non-metallics I've tried to do more um, depth within the highlight itself rather than just having, you know, a highlight to contrast to dark areas, which gives you your non-metallic metal look. Uh, the same with the chest. I've tried to give more of a, like, I don't know, perception of, of something reflecting there. Uh, I don't know exactly what, like, this is maybe... I don't know, she's standing on the top of one of those Blackstone arcs on the ocean... Uh, and there's clouds and you can see the edge of the fortress there and then the sky with the white clouds and that's why it's so dark or it, I don't know it could be inside and but no my my general thought was that it was happening on like a, a dark overcast day or um, she was bringing in clouds because she's casting or she's like you know reaching out from the front of one of those blackstone ships uh, to rip a high elf ship in half or something like that. That, that. That's that's where my thoughts were going with it. So uh, that you understand that. And I mean, I did paint the um, I did paint the forks last, and I think that is the the better part of um, or the best part of the metal on this model is those there. And I I, I can definitely see myself starting to understand things a little bit more. Um, if anyone has any tips on how to understand how to put those kind of like secondary lights within this sphere, I think it's got something to do with more of the scene being visible, but just the reflection shapes distorting because of the sphere. Uh, but I'm still not 100% sure. I'll, I'll keep researching, I'll keep watching and trying to figure that out. But it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure it out. And I can already tell that my brain is starting to absorb the ideas a bit and so I'm going to just keep at it because I, it's something I want to grasp. And then after I finish this non-metallic uh, quest, I'll move on to a freehand quest, which is another area where I'm certain that I have some shortcomings. I mean, it's something that I barely do much of at all, if anything. And I definitely haven't done a lot of complex non-metallics. Uh, and I think we're getting close to covering all of the, the topics that I wanted to cover with this model. The the other thing um, I wanted to talk about, though, was the, the blacks. And it, it kind of worked out well for the fact that, you know, I love my focus and the blacks are really all on the lower, the lower half of her, the bottom half of her. So 
um, her boots and her, her cloak. I, I thought about using some purple like I had in there. You can see it was... I had in the handle of the dagger. I thought about using some purple on the inside of the cloak or... Um, or even doing like a, a line, a border line on the, around the cloak. I, I mocked it up. I didn't like how it looked. I didn't mock, mock up the inside of the cloak though because I felt like, you know, having this big splash of purple down here, um, which would be really the only color in the entire model. It's, it's like maybe it would look good and it might help this area to look more than just, you know, this plain black boringness. But... I think it would distract from the, the focus up here and I don't know. It might be interesting to mock it up and see how it looks just for myself. But yeah, I think that um I think that about covers it. I think it's I still think it's it's interesting that this ended up like, you know, unintentionally monochrome. I also like the, um, I, I have a lot of fun when I paint these kind of like all white models. Um, the other one that I kind of reference and think of as all white was the um, Seeking Refuge model uh, using just different tones of colds and blues. And I, I, I like it a lot because you can, you can get so much out of like the different tones in, in whites and greys that you just don't really believe that you can get those variations and differences when you when you look at them like you, you might put a, a a pot of two greys next to each other and if you have some bright colors in a scene then of course uh the the difference in those colors isn't a lot but when you've got such a shallow depth of color range in a model like this the differences are much more apparent and i really i really enjoy playing with that and trying to understand and use it to make things stand out like you know her skin is the the main emphasis of the model it's the largest surface area other than her hair which is obviously huge but i don't want that to be the focus so you put more color into the into the skin um yeah i think that i think that about wraps things up that's about all i had to say about this I know a few of you have been asking for um, specific tutorials and doing me painting, and I I would like to make some more of them. I'm I'm as I'm researching through this non-metallic metal, I keep thinking about ways that I could present it to people to help them to understand it better the way I have, and I think I will try and do something like that eventually. Uh, I'll put together a series which is about non-metallic metal on miniatures because there's a lot of choices that you have to make when you're painting on miniatures when compared to um, when you, when compared to traditional art and flat 2D painting because we have to consider how things are going to look when you turn it. And, oh, that's another thing that I can sort of talk about just for a second here is that um, I use a lot of dramatic light and so... I've discovered that, you know, when you do that, you can get some bad angles. I actually think this model doesn't have any really bad angles. Like, I mean, if I was looking for the worst angle on the model, I think it's probably right there. Perhaps right there. Uh, but that's, again, that's part of the sculpt. I mean, like, how can you paint that to make it look really good, no matter what you're thinking? So, um, but... Compared to traditionally, or compared to a lot of the times, I think this model has less than most. And it's it's because of this idea that I've had recently to keep the lighting consistent. Like, the lighting on her is obviously coming from the front. But when you paint each and every, every single little thing, you paint it with the best volume that that shape can have from the angle that the that someone is most likely to view it from. So when you turn around to the back here, the anatomy of her arm is painted as though this is the focal point because 
it is when you're looking at it from here and you can't see it from the other side. So if you apply that philosophy to everything across the whole model, I mean, if we look down top down on her arm, it looks a little bit weird. That, that there might actually be the worst angle, but who looks at a model like top down like that, if ever? And then the other bad angles will always end up being, you know, underneath angles. But again... Who, who cares to, to paint for people looking at it like this? I mean, if you're going to be judging a model based on how it looks like this, it's going to, it's going to end up, you know, needing sacrifices in other places in order to make those, those areas look good. I think it's just worth considering. And you might see I've deliberately left the bottom side of her arm very dark, but there is a bit of a... a a green reflection in there which is meant to come off the off the stones uh, but I wanted the shadows to be quite dark so that it looks like she is in darkness or mostly darkness so that overcast sort of cloudy sky with maybe just you know that's why the that's why the light is like so white there's no sun there's no specific light causing um, any you know direct um, spot lighting and, and that's why the model itself is kind of like a diffuse lighting across the whole thing because it, it when you think about um, overcast light and light with clouds there is just basically light everywhere and no shadows I mean I didn't do it with no shadows at all because doing that on miniatures is crazy but yeah I've gone on long enough I keep keep babbling and you'll get bored so I hope I hope you might have found a few tidbits of um, advice and information that help you with this, um, help you with your painting. And if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you're having a great day and I'll catch you, catch you soon.